I'm making Hasselback Spice Squash with coconut flatbreads and toasted seeds. Now Hasselback is basically a way of cutting through vegetables almost all the way so you get this lovely fan pattern. It allows the vegetable to open up and roast really, really nicely. So traditionally you do this with a potato, but I'm going to show you how to do it with the butternut squash. So if you use something as a guide, so some chopsticks or well, like I'm using the handles of a wooden spoon, it stops you from cutting all the way through and it just allows you to work a lot quicker. So take a sharp knife, hold everything together, pinch the handles in and then just cut evenly spaced thin slices. As you'll see, by using those guides, you cut almost all the way through to the same level all the way down. So this recipe serves four people. You can either do it like I am with one large butternut squash halved or two smaller ones. So just work all the way down so you have this lovely fan of slices along the length. So that's going to go onto the tray to join the other half that I've already prepared and the tray's just lined with a bit of greaseproof paper to stop it from sticking. So then I'm just going to top it off with some coconut oil, a really lovely smoky spice mix and some bay leaves as well. But for the full list of ingredients, just click on the link. So coconut oil, just rub half over each. And of course, coconut and butternut squash work beautifully together. Also, rather than using olive oil, which would just pour everywhere, because you can rub coconut oil in a kind of paste form, it's much easier to work into all the grooves on the squash. So once that's all rubbed in, I'm just going to wash my hands. And take some of this smoky spice mix, so scatter it over the top, and then some bay leaves, just to add a little bit of perfume. So if you just slot the bay leaves in, all the way down, just take any remaining bay leaves and just tuck them underneath. Now that's ready to go in the oven at 200 degrees for an hour until the squash is nice and soft. So when the squash is nearly ready, it's time to crack on with the flatbreads. So I'm going to start off with some coriander and I'm going to save the leaves for later on for garnish, but I just want the stems and just really finely chop them. And this just adds an extra layer of freshness to the flatbreads. So into the bowl, I'm just going to move this out of the way to give me plenty of room for making flatbreads. It's really easy, some self-raising flour, a little bit of salt, and then some yogurt. This isn't a yeasted dough. The yogurt is going to react with the self-raising flour to create that lift. And you don't need to let it rest or prove. It's ready to work with straight away. And then just for the coconut flavor, a little bit of coconut extract. And then just take a fork and bring it together. So it's almost there. I'm just going to turn my frying pan on. Just lightly dust your work surface and turn the dough out. If you find the dough's a little bit wet, just add a pinch more flour, but not too much because you don't want it to dry out. So this dough will make eight flatbreads. So just roughly portion it off, give it a twist. So eight balls, roughly that size. And just use a rolling pin and roll them out into thin rounds. And then go straight into a hot, dry frying pan. Then just take a pair of tongs the pan and just flip it over and that's what you're looking for just that lovely golden brown mottled texture as the flatbreads are cooking just take a clean dry tea towel lay it out and as soon as your flatbread's ready just tip it out onto the tea towel and then cover it over and what will happen is the steam will get trapped inside the tea towel and keep it really nice and soft if you just leave them to cool they'll go quite brittle and hard so now just carry on rolling and cooking the flatbreads and just adding them to the stack as you go so just keep them tucked in so they stay nice and warm and lovely and soft. Then as soon as your squash is ready, take it out of the oven, scatter over some toasted seeds mixed with the remainder of the spice rub and just finish it off with some fresh chopped coriander leaves. And then it's ready to serve. And for more delicious vegetarian recipes, click on the subscribe button.